Let's give a big hand for them and welcome you on the stage. Thank you. Uh, I slept two hours, so if I speak something stupid, just find it out. But uh, so I will be I will be talking about uh, spreadsheets and uh, replacing them with the, in, with the Django web app. And it's based on a specific project that I have been doing like during the last last year. Uh, because the topic is kind of a little bit boring, spreadsheets is not like the kind of Spotify type of fancy topic. I, I give you some motivation for, for, for why this is this might be interesting. So if you think about it, uh, Microsoft Excel is likely the most used programming environment. If you take a wider view of programming as something that you kind of combine data and summarize that. That's like when a normal casual user makes a sum function in Excel, it's in a sense that's the same thing as we do as a programmer, so we loop around things. And uh, so spreadsheets are a really powerful tool actually. And replacing them might not be always wise replacing them with web apps. So I will try to give you some kind of ideas that when it's, what you should think about when you are replacing one and uh, what you would like to do, why you would want to replace spreadsheet with web app. And the kind of, the motivation here, probably the best motivation for this is kind of money. So there's a lot of spreadsheets. If you, if you think spreadsheet that you use or your friends that work in some companies use for different things, like every company has in quite mission critical things, they use spreadsheets. And sometimes this is wise, but I give as an example the background story of my, my case and you see that the pro problems that there can be. And I think in next 10 years, next five years even, there will be lots of uh, web startups uh, who basically replace some kind of business, uh, quite specific business case that's currently handled by uh, uh, spreadsheets, in-house spreadsheets. They will build a business around that. Uh, so if we want to start a startup, uh, go to talk to people, what kind of spreadsheet, spreadsheets they use, and you can probably find a business opportunity there. So I will go first through background story. Uh, then I will talk a little bit about why, why to replace spreadsheets and why not. And then some challenges that I, when I did this uh, with Django, uh, how I solved them. And I, I will go through those uh, three points like uh, the data input co problem and uh, complex queries and then some miscellaneous stuff related to graphs and related to graphs. So about a year ago, uh, a friend, my, friend of mine was running like biggest uh, telesales organization in Nordics. Uh, they have like 20 offices. Every office has like 20 to 100 people uh, and like active number of active workers are like 1,000. So he, we were drinking beer and he told about their system where how they track their sales and how they do their payroll. And they were doing this system that in every office, uh, the office manager at the end of the day filled a spreadsheet with the sales of, for every product that every person in that office had sold. They filled the amount of uh, products sold and amount of hours worked, and then they also filled kind of sick leaves and that kind of stuff in that uh, one spreadsheet. And then they sent at the end of the day or in the next morning all these 20 spreadsheets to an assistant who every day compiled these 20 spreadsheets to kind of uh, one big spreadsheet that was called uh, Mega Report. <laughs> <laughs> so, and with this Mega Report, they then draw kind of analysis, kind of graphs and did analysis of how things are going. And they also did a payroll based on this. So there was kind of, if you do sales, it's, it's kind of, uh, you don't get normal pay, but you're 
faith by incentive, uh, how, how well you sell, sell. And there was kind of quite complex bonus models based on the uh, what kind of products are, are you selling and how efficiently and you know. And all, the, all of this was implemented in, in this huge mega report uh, spreadsheet system. And you can imagine that when you send every day this uh, spreadsheet to the, these office managers who are not very technically kind of, uh, they don't know much about Excel. And if there's even one problem with one of your uh, functions in cell, and they have built this uh, huge amount of data, you can image like 10, 10 products for 100 employees or like 50 employees. It's quite many uh, data points to fill every day. And if there's one problem, they might need to send a new Excel and they have to fill it again with the same data. So there's a lot of this kind of annoying problems. And another thing was that part of this data was already in some other system, but, but, but kind of <coughs> automatizing, automatizing that so that they could test that data to be part of this analytics and payroll system was not possible with the Excel. So I thought, I, I said that, okay, I can, I can do something on that quite quickly. It turned out it was much more complex than I thought. And, but, uh, and in the beginning, I spent lots of time. This was kind of a side project for me. I'm, I'm usually doing mobile development. And uh, so, but currently it's paying my bills. Like I can, I, I work for one week from this project and it's enough for months salary. So it's kind of good money. But you can, you can understand there's lots of these kind of big opportunities if you start doing this. So, can I see the time somewhere? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> old school. Huh? <laughs> so, let's let's take a quick look what spreads are, spreadsheets are good for, and quite important things are. So, the background picture here is actually I have modified to kind of change the name and change the name of the products. So. This was the original like mega report input spreadsheet. So this lo looks ugly in a sense, but this is good for many things. And one is like that's actually showing very high density data. So if the sales, man sales manager fills this data <coughs> every day to the seed, he can see a lot of data in in one view. And if you think typical jungle forms or jungle views. They are actually quite low density data views. So they are not that good for this kind of high density data. The other thing is, this is showing multi-dimensional data. So if you think normal HTML table, it's like two-dimensional. You have calls, columns and rows. But if you look this, there's a, you can see that, that it's actually nested uh, tables there. So if you have dates on top. And then you have here, you have employees. And for every employee, you have like uh, like products and then the hours he has worked. So it's actually multi-dimensional data. And doing that well as in a web app is actually not, there are not that many good uh, components for that. So, and the other thing is this, this is really fast for manual data. So when we started doing the system, the idea was that we will replace the manual input and save uh, hours of work every day by bringing this data from the another system. But as you know, when you integrate systems, it takes time. And actually, uh, the system has been running since January, and they have been, have been using this manual input. <coughs> and we are just now getting to the point that we can actually get the automatic data over the APIs. So it was really important that the web app also supports like very fast manual data input. And if you think typical Django forms, even in admin, they are not really suited for like inputting uh, hundreds of data points quickly. Uh, then some things about spreadsheets is like, like this was built, this horrible monstrous spreadsheet was built by a guy who is not technical. 
So spreadsheets are quite good for casual people who can make quite complex calculations and kind of they can do it. And this is really hard for to replace in a, in a web app. And of course, as we all know, like spreadsheets are really good for visualization, but everybody can do quickly some graph based based on the data columns. So these are kind of there are several other things, but these are kind of some of the points. And I realized quite early that when when I will implement this as a web app, I will lose something. So I cannot do easily. Uh, so something that the casual user could easily do custom summaries because then I would actually need to implement the whole spreadsheet engine so I would do basically Google Docs alone as a side project uh, not, not twice uh, also do it yourself visualizations might it, it's kind of similar problem as the, this summary thing that it's not very easy to do system where you can uh, visualize any <coughs> kind of data from your system so Again, you would be implementing something like real spreadsheet at that point. But uh, so there are here are a couple of kind of screenshots. I will screenshots from the web app. Uh, so uh, it's actually running, and, and, and they are daily using it. And this is kind of the replacement for the spreadsheet system. But now that we have a web app, we get also. Uh, Lots of cool stuff, and uh, of course, this was the main point that we can we could bring the data over the from the different systems to this uh, safe tracking and payroll system, and we can also like automatically get generate the payroll to the accounting software, and and the data would be real time instead of like them manually ins inserting them every day, so that was like big plus. A uh, couple of other things where that there were possibilities for new user interfaces like to access this data. Of course, the web access would be kind of the, is the main thing that they use. But we also implemented like this kind of uh, wall views. So in every office, they have these huge projectors projecting kind of this more fancy, fancy kind of views to this same data. So they can have a kind of best. These are not real names, I have changed them. And, uh, so they can see like who is the best seller at our office at the moment. And they can do kind of, uh, because they can, they have kind of complex rules that every office has to match certain mix of uh, products. They are not selling drinks and flowers and fl <laughs> fruits. I changed the product names to protect them. But uh, the point was like, that uh, the sellers can all the time see in the wall that what's the situation of the of the uh, office, and they can have competitions based on this sales data. Like this is like every month they have a competition and you get some benefits if you win it. And also, this was kind of silly for me, but it it was really easy to do once we got, had this data in the system, but it was really important for the high, like, like top management, that they get this sales report as an SMS every day. So they, they are kind of feeling the pulse of the sales all the time. And this is kind of quite trivial to implement, but for them it was like the greatest feature ever. <laughs> you know, kind of, uh, so you, when you do this kind of systems, you can kind of find funny things that can be valuable for the end user that you think that uh, is kind of Bit silly, but this is this was like they were really happy when when I did this basically this SMS reporting. Okay, uh, let's go then to a few of these challenges that I had with channel. And maybe the biggest one was this multidimensional data input. And what I mean it mean by it is like. Uh, how many of you know Django? So you can kind of understand this simple model, right? So we have, for example, for this daily sale, like how many how many products certain employee 
has solved at that day. We have this very simple model. This is actually simplified from the proof. But we have date field, then the employee field, then the product field, and they, those are the foreign keys to different models, and then the amount. So uh, what I wanted was something like spreadsheet to input this data. So this is kind of uh, the view without any CSS styling. And I, again, changed the product names there. So again, we have this like one dimension is the date, like it's column, column dimensions. But the, here we have actually two dimensions, uh, like the employees and products uh, for every employee. And the whole system is actually full of these kind of things. Uh, for example, bonus models, they might be different for ev every office and every every product has a different kind of price that you get by paying. So I had like tens of these kind of multidimensional spreadsheets. And in the beginning, I started writing that by hand. But it's actually, it's not trivial problem because you have to, uh, every time you save the data, you have to check, you have to map this cell to actually database uh, row. And uh, you have to, of course, validate and do that kind of things. But you also have to kind of make the user experience great. So if I click this cell, so I can use arrow keys to move around and that key to also to move around. And uh, when there's an error, it should be shown like somehow color, and then you can hover the mouse over it and see the exact problem with what was there. So there was not ready-made components for this. So uh, in the beginning, I did them by hand, got every, every view. And then I started kind of abstracting that uh, 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 kind of reusable component for this. And I, I call it beam table. Uh, like multi-dimensional table, but I wanted some quite short name for it. And before showing how it works, uh, let's go like through the typical Django data fetching. So if I want to fetch, uh, for for example, uh, the sales for a week, for one week, for every employee in certain office, I do like very typical Django query. And then I also fix like uh, all the employees that that office has and all the products that are sold currently. And then also the dates I define. For for example, one sheet might have every day, date of the month or every, I actually use the week as a kind of default view to have uh, all the weeks, uh, one week sales in, in one view. So uh, you want to, Kind of get these independently, independently of these, because these sales, because there might be employees who haven't sold anything at all this week. So you have, you want you want to get them as a one uh, data dimension, and also the products. So because this this month, like in the beginning of the, uh, the week, this this query is empty in a sense. So as I said, that my initial uh, Solution it requires like hundreds of lines of code for every every view, but I have basically this is now the API how I do these uh, tables. So I wrap the query set the sales that we fetched in the previous view to kind of uh, beam table model, and then I use this model to cons to help with constructing this table with kind of the UI component. And uh, I pass a couple of things. So in the beginning, this, I pass the model there. And then the cell that we are editing. Like in this case, we are editing the amount of products sold. So that's kind of uh, the field, model field of this young model that we are editing. And the multi-dimensional aspects comes in this row dimensions and column dimensions. Column dimensions. So as a row dimensions, I have two like employee and product, you remember from the view that we have these two dimensions. And as a column dimensions, we had these dates. And that's it uh, for showing the data. Uh, 
And this, now that I have kind of cleaned up this API and been using this, this has been like a huge productivity boost. Every time I have to do some new kind of input view, I can use these. And uh, they are also kind of extendable. I, I can show a little later how, how to do a bit com more complex stuff. So, and the rendering part in the Django template, we basically have to include some CSS uh, and then just call table render in somewhere in the uh, template. And we need JavaScript to cursor movement and uh, creating the cell, uh, input cells. So maybe I'll, if I go back for this view. So, you cannot uh, have every one of these cells as an uh, kind of input, uh, HTML input, uh, because you would have thousands of them, and every browser gets totally kind of, uh, it basically holds when you have thousands of input cells. So you have to do it dynamically that when you are editing the cell, you can insert an input there and uh, then you can move around and you create new input cells. So that's why we need JavaScript there. <coughs> so I, I have, I'm not very familiar with Django style, so I have got this my own style that all my widgets have this render, and if they have JavaScript component, then I render that as in JavaScript block. I don't know how you guys do it, but this was my way of doing it. Then, when we want to save that data that we get when you kind of press, uh, uh, it actually works so that when you press return, it sends the data to uh, server. So we create the model and table first, and then we just pass the post parameters to the uh, table. And the magic, or it's not magic, but like a bit complex part that this actually solves is that like you have to map all these rows, the database rows and database IDs, and you delete delete models if all of these are empty, for example. Or when you first time create it, you kind of add, add a row, and when you change those values, you can update, update the uh, existing row. So that's the kind of magic that this solves easily. So uh, I wanted to be, this to be kind of extendable so that, for example, if I would like to have uh, a sum of uh, each product sales at the end of the row, I could add an item to the uh, dimension that it's been summed. So you can easily kind of add a new custom items to the, uh, this widget, basically. <coughs> and then sometimes you have uh, several input fields in a cell, kind of as a one dimension. Uh, one case that I have is that they, they have these work hours, and they also mark that which one, how many of the, those hours are kind of evening hours, because you get different different uh, compensation for the evening hours. So these are kind of two fields of the one model, but they are now kind of input dimensions. So you have like, uh, you can have row, row, di row dimensions, like mul even multiple of them, and column dimensions, and then this cell dimension becomes a set of one input dimension, one dimension for ro rows. So again, this is kind of, quite handy for creating quickly this uh, spreadsheet-like views. So I have to clean up the code a little bit, but I'm for uh, I'm running a workshop tomorrow, and I will publish this today as a 0.1 version. So it's it's uh, I have several version, versions of this, it in my code base, but I, I can simplify a one version of those. and. Hopefully, people find it useful. I, I can go in, I'm going to develop it further. So, uh, 
other problems with Django. So everybody who has been hanging around in Django IRC channel have heard me uh, complaining about this thing. So all these record views have a lots of queries and quite complex queries that aggregate data. So for, for example, the company overview view, it has to calculate uh, weighted uh, sales. So every, every sale has a kind of weight. And because some of the sales are more uh, valuable than others, and then calculate uh, how well hours, how many hours people have been uh, working, and uh, then calculate kind of efficiency values for those. And also for the graphs, you have to kind of find for every day that you are kind of plotting this data, you have to find the quite complex complex calculations to construct the graphs. And uh, the thing is that SQL itself was basically made for these kind of complex queries. It's, it's like, that's where SQL is really good. It's not good at the, as a kind of web scale, web scale data storage, and people are now using no SQL databases for that. But these kind of aggregation queries, SQL is like, that's, that's what it was made for. But Django, o, uh, Django Objective Relation Model kind of hides the good things uh, in SQL behind its own interface. And if you have these complex queries, you have to, uh, you're kind of constantly trying to optimize them, but you have to understand SQL very well to do that, and also try to kind of understand Django's ORM internals, how, to, how it works. So I, I've been, doing this for, for a year, and last week, I think, but I, I again complained in IRC, and somebody then told about SQL Alchemy, that it has kind of nice, nice core API for constructing complex SQL queries. Now I started using it, and I fell in love immediately. It's, <coughs> it's really good for this thing. Is Hulia here? Is he happening to <coughs> Okay, thanks for, <laughs> for that. So I recommend that if you if you start doing something like this, you can do the models in uh, objective relational uh, mapping model. But for the complex queries, you start using the SQL alchemy instead of Django or um, like and learn that quickly. Uh, then some mis misc stuff. So you need graphs. I've been using Float. Have you heard about that? It's kind of JavaScript graphing library. The cool thing about it is it allows these kind of interactive graphs. Uh, then I have, I had to implement quite lots of uh, things for date ranges because SQL doesn't have as native data uh, type any kind of date ranges. And this kind of state software is full of queries that span different kind of data, data ranges. Uh, and they can get quite complicated. So that, that been, that's been really useful to have that abstracted way, so you don't manually every time make these complex queries. And then this CSV output is kind of really useful, because now, now the users can do their own analysis in this web app. But if you provide the data in certain views as a CSV output, they can take that and import that to Excel and then they make their own analysis. So you can escape the problem by that way. So that's, that's really yeah, helpful. And OK, I was quite quick. So thanks. Uh, uh, I have a workshop tomorrow, and we will use this BIM data that I used, and then we can try to use what if I have time to do some graphs. So if you want to join, it would be quite fun to, to think about some spreadsheets. There are lots of spreadsheets like that you probably use, and let's implement that as a simple web app. And as I said, that there's a lot of business opportunities, if, especially if it's money related to spreadsheet. So you can then start this small startup. 
based on this <laughs> two hour work, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, any questions? Yeah. Yeah. One question related to the, I mean, like, why? I mean, uh, <laughs> have, you, uh, have, you, have you considered the, the Microsoft Power Pivot, which kind of connects the SQL server to the Excel? Uh, no, I can, didn't. Can you repeat the question, sir? Sorry? Can you repeat the question for one? Ah, so you were, uh, he, he was asking why, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> why would you do this? And you, the solution was that yeah. Microsoft yeah. offers some kind of uh, yes, the uh, Excel 2010. I've not experienced with that. Yeah, but I mean, I know that they yeah. just yeah. checked out. So, the point was like this happens. Okay. Like, I was in a bar <laughs> <laughs> with my friend <laughs> and promised to help him, but I don't know anything about Microsoft stuff, so I was the, like, let's fix this problem. <laughs> so, the, maybe the point is that if you want to do a, like spreadsheet type of stuff as a web app, it's uh, more complex than like Django is not made for that. Django is good for news sites and for kind of maybe media related sites, but it's not very good for that. So we need, if we want to do this without Microsoft tools, we need lots of more uh, UI components and backend stuff to help us with that. So this is kind of my first step to that direction. So, yeah. Uh, what kind of graphs do you use for this point? Or, and, and how do you find the plot as a library? Uh, so it's... Can you... Uh, okay. <laughs> so he was asking that what kind of uh, graphs I use plot for, and how I find it as a library. So it took some time to have get them look kind of okay. Uh, it's it's not very like Edward Tooster style, so it has too much styling and for for, for a very complex graphs, but it has worked quite well for this. Uh, you need to write a little bit of code, for example, to handle date date conversions because it uses JavaScript timestamps for for you know, date ranges and like typical. If you use Mat MATLAB, you have the all this these bar graphs looks horrible in the beginning, and you have to fix the bits. And you know, uh, it was not like plug and play, but it, it kind of works. For me. But I I usually have like a couple of bars and maybe one line in in one graph. So if you have more complex graphs, it might be the best one. Given that the the table was. Uh Multi-dimensional. How did you pick? You know, was there any logic to, to picking the uh, the series for the plot, or was that completely separate? No, no. It's uh, like I have this. I we have agreed with, with them that which kind of graphs they have want yep. want to have, and then I have implemented that. But you could build on top of these things kind of more more kind of that you select what you want to plot. Um, you told that um, you said that uh, there's some when you go from spreadsheets to uh, web applications, you lose some of the features. So, uh, yeah. uh, is there some kind of integration with spreadsheets so when you can kind of like move the data back to spreadsheets? Yeah, yeah, like the common separated value. Like <laughs> <laughs> so, this I have used with com like as an export function, like common separated values files. So it, the user can take that and load it to the Excel and <coughs> do it his own analysis. So, but, but that doesn't. Uh, so then you lose some like um, the um, the functions and yeah, yeah. things. So so there's that's there's no integration beyond. No no they have to do their own own kind of because uh, there are couple of these guys in the organization who wants to do their own kind of analysis and they can use the spreadsheet, uh, like they know Excel a little bit. So I don't, because this is a kind of side project, I don't kind of try to serve those two, three guys very well, but they can take this data and they have their own spreadsheet system. Uh, they can import the CSV data in one view and have ready-made their own functions in there. Other views. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, as a as a comment to the to the same point, uh, we've been having well solving basically the same kind of problems, and uh, I think with very very um, small and and uh, focused uh, tries, you can you can uh, help some users. For example, we have the same kind of uh, very very big table, and um, basically we we calculated what the users want to do with it, yeah. and most, I think it was like 9 out of 10 just wanted to select these uh, cells and, and add them. So yeah. we just yeah. added like 10, 10 lines of JavaScript and yeah. everywhere you clicked on the screen, yeah. it, it would just add the numbers. And yeah. it, it's a really, really small improvement, but it yeah. made them their yeah. life easier. So yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, small stuff like that yeah. can exactly. be great. Do you have any support for concurrent or real-time editing a la Google Docs? Uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have, uh, I, I even don't do Ajax at the moment. Mm -hmm. So it, it's actually, when you are editing, when you press the red form, it actually kind of sends the form. Uh, like the JavaScript sends the form, but like, uh, I've been kind of planning to add Ajax support in some point, but because the big idea would be that we don't do much of manual input in the future, so I have tried to keep it. It's, it's been working well enough. And of course, when you, have, when you if you send every cell to the server, then every time you edit, uh, because the cell doesn't necessarily uh, one table row is many cells. That can be many cells. So if, if they have uh, dependencies, then you have to be careful with uh, how you do the error checking, in which point you show the error. Because you are, if you're editing uh, and in the middle of kind of filling the whole, whole row, basically, you send the data and get error. What kind of interactivity do you have in them? Do you just show a data value for a bar, or uh, yeah? So more you could advanced. yeah, you could basically build this plot that you fetch fetch data for different date ranges, for example. Uh, but currently, all of the views are kind of either <coughs> one month or one week or the whole year, and uh, it's one task to kind of extend the all views to support. Uh, uh, flexible and day train systems. Was somebody else having? Yeah. You know, just, uh, we've had a few questions on Twitter on the uh, URL that you will find it in Settle. Can you show it on the. Yeah, there's a placeholder that at the moment, so I have to upload it yes. today. And yeah, it's. it's something that I would like to polish and uh, put it out there, but this is like 0 0.1 version. API will, API will change and you know. Um, are you aware of any um, similar spreadsheet style functionality already? So there wasn't like, I didn't find at that point any good like channel that, that solves this problem of quickly mapping a model to Kind of UI component. There's of course lots of kind of spreadsheets <coughs> like HTML, JavaScript widgets, but uh, they don't solve the mapping of data to, from the cells to the model. And because I need to do lots of these quickly, so that's that's why I finally did my own own brain. Anything else? Okay. <laughs> Students in here, the uh, 
<laughs> quite cheap lunch. The cafeteria in this building is offering lunches from around two euros up if you have a student card. Uh, for other members, just